and of course Hall of Famer Tim Karkchen joins us. Tim, good morning. How you doing? I'm well, fellas. How you doing? We're doing all right. We're babysitting your kid for you. Yeah. Just, uh, I, just so you know. Yeah, he's all right down the hall. I got, him his, I got him his juice box. He's sometimes good. he asks for lunch money and things like that when you were a little negligent. <laughs> I just want you. Yeah, and he's off, he's off our cell phone plan finally. So <laughs> oh, wow. That was a big day for you, Tim. I, I'm sure it was. Of course. Um, all right, so first off, how perfect is this series for Major League Baseball? I'm sure uh, not that they ever want something to play out. You have Padres Dodgers on one side of the bracket. You have Phillies Mets in the other. Yeah, it's great. The whole postseason is great, fellas, because I just don't see a prohibited favorite, a 100-win team that's just going to steamroll everyone like we've seen in other years. But to have a regional matchup like this, starting with the Padres and the Dodgers, which is a tremendous matchup, but the Mets and Phillies is perfect also. Same division, never played against each other in the playoffs before, this is so rich. The playoffs have been so good so far with these games that have been so close, so dramatic, so tension-filled, and it's only going to get better from here. And I love the Brewers. I love the way they play. They deserve better than this. But if you're going to ask for the perfect matchup with the Phillies, I think it has to be Phillies match. Tim, do you think this is a matchup, though, where you've got a Mets team that maybe had to – sort of empty the tank this week. What kind of Mets team do you think is coming in here for this five-game series against a rested Phillies club? Well, John, there's two ways to look at it. Number one, they're going to be exhausted with everything they've been through, traveling as much as they have, doubleheader on Monday, winner-take-all game last night, emotional, everything. So, yes, they, they are going to be at a slight disadvantage against a rested Philly team that's got their, their pitching all lined up and really good pitching all lined up. However, as we've seen in recent years, including last year, you know, when you're playing with that kind of momentum and you win that game like you did on Monday against the Braves and then you win like you did last night, those are victories that really carry you along. So it's all depending on how you look at this. I would rather be rested and have my pitching lined up, but they have tremendous momentum. And, fellas, I'm just telling you, do not underestimate the Mets. They have won eight games this year, nine including last night, that they trailed through eight innings. That's the most in baseball. They are a resilient, tough, Team. They are a different Mets team than we've seen in recent years. What weaknesses may the Mets have that the Phillies have a strength with where that hopefully those comebacks don't happen? Well, again, their starting pitching is not going to be nearly as fresh as the Phillies starting pitching. And more important, their bullpen isn't going to be as fresh either. You know, David Johnson, formerly of the Mets and others, he's Tell me, you win in October with bullpen and bench, and you have to have a deep, versatile, rested bullpen if you're going to get through the entire month. And the Mets are not going to have that starting in this series because of everything they've done to get to this point. But again, sometimes the adrenaline just takes over, and when you haven't pitched three days in a row, but you can in October because it's the playoffs, this is why this month, is so wonderful because you take all the rules of the regular season, how we're going to use our pitching, and you just chuck them out the window because this is October. Tim, we've been talking about it this morning. Uh, the Phillies 7-0 and in Game 1's the last two Octobers. That's pretty amazing, and a lot of that is just Zach Wheeler. But would whatever happens in Game 1, the Wheeler start, dictate to you who starts Game 2? Because the Sanchez-Nola discussion is very interesting. Yes, it, it always is predicated on what game one looks like. And I, I, I don't think you can lose with Nola or Sanchez in game two. That's how good both of them have been this year. But in a five-game series, you have a little bit more room to, you know, toy around with things as opposed to a three-game series um, like I, like we just did. I did Detroit against um against the Astros. So there's all sorts of options when you're in a five-gamer, but when you're with the Phillies and you've got at least three quality starting pitchers to start a five-game series, it shouldn't matter who starts one or two, but of course they will discuss that. Tim, you know this baseball team inside and out, so if you were to just guess, right, based off of your knowledge of this Phillies roster, 
Do they come out tomorrow? You use the word rested or rusty. Well, I'm going to say they come out rested because of what's gone on the last couple of years where they've been so good and so close and come up short. They, they all recognize that, and they're all going to come into this postseason saying, well, we're not going to let that happen again. We're going to win the World Series this year. So <clears throat> I can't imagine them coming out rusty. However, however, we all recognize that baseball, in my opinion, being the hardest game in the world to play and is best played when you play it every day. When you take this kind of time off after playing an entire season every day, it can lead to problems. This is, this, it's, it's impossible to replicate a baseball game with any sort of training or BP. The only way to replicate it is to play a game. And that's the only danger with the Phillies. They haven't played a game since Sunday, and they got to get going here. But I, I fully expect them to do that because of the veteran nature of that team. Tim, do you think that Rob Thompson learned lessons? We always hear about that in October you get experience. What lessons do you think Rob Thompson learned from the last two Octobers? Well, I think he learned what we all learn every October is that anything is possible. And it will be anything is possible in this postseason more than maybe anyone that I've ever seen. Again, given how closely matched all of these teams are going into the playoffs. So he's going to learn from last year. But last year is last year. The year before is two years ago. He's going to have to recognize, as do all managers, that every year presents a different challenge. Just because you took a guy out too early last year or left him in too, too long last year, you just have to change all thoughts and, and say it's a different year. But I, I'm not sure any tremendous lessons will be learned other than anything is possible. Tim, his career is not over after this, and it's not going to be done for a long time. But you know Bryce Harper, the whole story, you know, dating back to when he was in high school and on the uh, cover of magazines. How important for his legacy is winning a World Series? Uh, well, I think it's important. I think he's going to go to the Hall of Fame no matter what. Mm -hmm. And I think he's had some incredibly big hits, including the home run to left center field against Padres a couple years ago that was just stunning. Um, but you're right. He's He plays so hard, he cares so much about winning that he is not going to rest until they win. Now let's, let's also understand there are a lot of great players that never won the World Series from, you know, Ted Williams to Ernie Banks and many, many, many others along the way. And But Bryce Harper wants no part of that group, and I think the team he's on now uh, has as good a chance as any to not only get to the World Series, but win it this year. Tim, were you surprised that Dave Dombrowski said R run it back and didn't make sort of some sort of a change uh, to this roster before the season began? And do you think this playoffs will be a referendum on whether that was a good decision or not? Um, well, he did some things at the trade deadline that I think made it recognize, hey, we're, we're not good enough in the bullpen after the bullpen had a one-month stretch and it wasn't very good after being really good. And Carlos Estevez has been really good for them, leader in the clubhouse, ninth-inning pitcher if you need him. Um, so I, I think a great thing is to show everyone we should have won last year. We have a really good team, and to show everyone, hey, we got to go make all these sweeping changes because we don't trust you, I I'm not a big believer in that, and I don't think Dave Dabrowski is. But he tinkered enough at the trade deadline, I think, to put the Phillies in a pretty good spot. Speaking of that, and last thing before we let you go, Tim, and we appreciate the time, we really do. Uh, Rob Thompson, the last two years, has not been afraid to platoon Bryson Stott. His numbers against left-handed pitching haven't been great this year either. How do you think he handles some of these platoons? Second base, is Bryson Stott sharpied into the lineup? And what about the outfield? You have Johan Rojas, Brandon Marsh, and also Austin Hayes, who they acquired at the deadline. How do you think Thompson works that out? Well, it's a day-to-day -day decision. And, fellas, I just finished with the Tigers and the Astros where A.J. Hinch's precision on matchups is just incredible the detail he uses and i think this goes for all managers they're gonna they're gonna look at everything is austin hayes can he hit a pitcher like this now forget the numbers against the guy 
So I think it's a day-to-day decision, and I think you platoon only if the numbers suggest we don't think this is a good matchup for this guy. My guess is Bryson Stott plays every day because he's been an everyday player in the postseason before and a pretty good producer. So my guess is they don't uh, platoon in the infield, but the outfield is going to be a mix-and-match situation. And maybe it should be. You got to check out Tim's podcast with his son, Jeff, who we see all the time. Is this a great game or what? So much fun. So many great insights and behind the scenes stories you may not have heard before. Be sure to check that out. And Tim, I, I've loved you for a long time, but I, I do forgive you for preempting General Hospital twice this week. I'm just going to say, <laughs> I'm willing to set it aside. You were right during General Hospital.